Hello, I'm Darren Slack, and welcome to week six of NFA's QB Cast, your weekly prep talk podcast for helping everyone associated with game day to get better. As we continue our leadership series, we come to number six on the list of critical attributes for quarterback leaders on the field and in life, and that's toughness. Now, toughness refers to something being strong or durable, not easily broken, capable of great endurance. It also carries the idea of not being easily influenced as a person. Toughness is another externally observable trait in leaders that's very appealing. Physical toughness in terms of football immediately applies to the capacity of a quarterback to take multiple hits, get up, and keep playing. But toughness in a quarterback is much deeper than just physical. Physical toughness is the layer we see, but that physical toughness is only possible through the mental and emotional toughness that keep a leader functioning through unimaginable pain and suffering. Now see, every quarterback's pain threshold or what they can endure is different. We all feel pain at different levels and at different times. This is not an effort to suggest that all pain quarterbacks experience is equal. It's not. That's my point. Toughness mentally and emotionally in a leader begins with understanding that comparing pain with others is pointless. Leaders experience more pain and challenge in any context because of the expectations and responsibility we accepted to take that role. You cannot look at or to others and wonder why it's harder for you. You chose the harder path to leadership. You cannot be a leader and not accept the burden that comes with it. There are many quarterbacks who love the idea of leadership and being able to tell others where to go, to feel in charge, to feel important, and to be visible to the fans. That weak agenda is quickly exposed when those imposters experience real pain, criticism, and the discipline for failure. Toughness is not the ability to avoid pain, but rather to courageously endure it. It's not a no-fear thing. Every leader is tempted to fear, but they choose to go forward in spite of what they will feel. There's an acceptance of a measure of pain that accompanies leadership. The question for every quarterback leader, and any leader for that matter, is how much can you take and still keep executing, still keep serving and delivering? Guys, I'm going to be straight with you here. There's not a lot to be said about this topic in terms of principles and growth steps. Toughness in all its forms, physical, emotional, and mental, is pure gut check. While I'm sure there are many coaching points to assist you in stepping up to your leadership responsibility, There's only one that determines whether you're truly tough, and that's self-control. And measuring your level of toughness, your capacity to control your own physical, emotional, and mental reactions to adversity and pressure is the only indicator. A quarterback leader or any leader without self-control and adversity under pressure is a rudderless ship. A team without leadership cannot control itself. It's doomed to fail. This lack of self-control is evident every week as teams without leadership allow themselves to demonstrate their lack of physical, mental, and emotional toughness in overreaction to pain, to loss, to bad calls, infighting, inconvenience, and coach discipline. We call this internal destruction of the team imploding. It's about this time during the season, if things aren't going well, that this starts to play out in many programs who lack toughness in their leaders. Players no longer buying into coaching. Coaches get frustrated with unresponsive players. And weak quarterbacks start blame shifting instead of demonstrating the fortitude the team desperately needs to stay on course. There is a formula to help determine how long a leader can hold out before they implode. And it works like this. When your passion for the team, coaches, and fans is greater than the pain you experience, your toughness factor stays high and you power through adversity. However, If your passion for the team, coaches, and fans is less than the pain you're experiencing, your toughness factor drops dramatically and implosion is dangerously imminent. The path to implosion is filled with weak leaders who complain, whine, blame shift, get frustrated, express anger, and get every unsportsmanlike penalty you can imagine. Only people whose passion remains high for those they serve can sustain their toughness and do what the Navy SEALs call embrace the suck. Embracing the suck means we allow that part of our job, the adversity we face, the pressure we're under, the suck, to become something we embrace fearlessly. We don't avoid it. We turn into the pain head on and do our best to remain self-controlled, problem-solving servant leaders under extreme distress. The only way we can achieve that mindset of embracing the suck is if we've determined that those we're serving are worthy of this kind of sacrifice. That is what each leader must determine on his own, in his own heart. Is this team and its coaches worthy of that kind of sacrifice and toughness from me? If so, we embrace the suck, stop pointing fingers, stop feeling sorry for ourselves, take responsibility, and effect change and execute. We stand in the pocket a little longer, we get out sooner, whichever the coach is saying. We stay engaged to extend the play as we can, regardless of the pain we experience. 
We get up a little earlier in the morning, stay out a little later after practice. We stop making excuses for what isn't happening. We apologize where we must, we encourage those who need it, and we quit looking to the other guy to be the guy. You are the guy, unless you aren't, and that is the choice of toughness in leadership. Self-control in leadership is only possible where we've determined our passion to love and serve our teammates and coaches will rule our hearts and minds. When we're more aware of our pain than our passion, self-control will fail. There are very few decisions in life harder than true toughness. In the face of injustice, inconvenience, and aptitude around you, as a leader, it's very difficult. You'll be blamed for things that aren't your fault, serve anyway. You'll be hit harder because you're standing stronger, stand anyway. You'll be criticized more closely because you take responsibility, be responsible anyway. You may not succeed as you desire, despite all your extra effort. Make the extra effort anyway. Listen, in leadership, in football, and in life, there will be more times in your life when you have to embrace the suck and have self-control than moments when everything goes as you want it to as a leader. That's the call, that's the cost. You don't wanna pay it, that's fine. Get out of the way so those who will can. However, if you're willing to pay the cost, no matter what the stakes, I can assure you of this. When it's over, winning or losing, success or failure will not be what mattered most to you. You'll find your toughness to stay the course and embrace the suck has brought you something much greater than those things as good as they are. Toughness brings you something that will stay with you for your whole life. Something more valuable to any man in leadership than just winning and losing, success or failure. And that's respect. Respect is the reward for toughness demonstrated on a team. And that's a life-affirming, powerful thing to receive from your teammates and your coaches. To those who don't make the choice to remain tough and aren't willing to embrace the suck, the pressure, the adversity, there's only one thing waiting for them, regret. And regret is the bankruptcy of a leader who lived in fear, weakness, and selfishness. They didn't do what they said they were gonna do. Listen, this toughness I'm talking about isn't just about getting up if you're injured and playing through a broken bone, although those things are admirable and certainly tough. I'm talking about you keeping your promise to lead with passion by example everywhere, every day, to everyone. I don't care where you live, where you play, or where you grew up. You do that in today's world, you have my respect because that is the most self-controlled, embracing the suck toughness there is in my book. Make the choice, be tougher than you were yesterday, and with more passion, it will be worth it. I hope that encourages you to be tough as leaders. Next week, we'll dive into another important attribute, but this week, let's be tougher for our brothers. Let's embrace the suck and give them our best. We wish you the best, NFA Nation, in your games this week, and we'll talk to you next week after your win.